I read that after the quarantine ended in China, that re request for divorce shot up. People found that being forced to live together became unbearable, because they lacked the skills needed to live together in a peaceful way. This is one of the reasons why we have the Vinaya. The rules are there, not simply to look after the individual's mind, but also to look after peace in the community, harmony in the community. And so as we're living together, it's good to think about the principles not only of the rules, but also the larger principles of how we can live together peacefully in harmony. And then being good friends to one another, admirable friends to one another, can further our practice. There are four qualities that the Buddha said that are useful in making any community peaceful, happy, where people live together with a sense of wanting to live together and benefiting from it. The first principle is generosity. You don't think only of yourself or what you're getting out of the situation or what you want out of the situation. You try to take other people's wants and needs into consideration as well. And if there's anything you have to share, you're happy to share it. We hear so much about hoarding right now. There's an old Thai story where they say that you want to know how you can have a fish and eat it for the whole year. You take part of it and eat it yourself, and you take the rest of it and you share it with other people. And then when they get something where they have a little bit of extra, then they think of sharing things back with you. This applies not only to material things, but also to time, energy, knowledge, forgiveness. The more we say that we have to share, the greater sense of wealth we have. So that even though there are restrictions on where we can go, who we can see, we constantly keep in mind that we have more than enough. And you learn how to look at your sense of what is enough. And realize that may be a lot less than you thought. And if there's more than that, then you can share. As the Buddha said, when you're sharing, you don't want to share so much that you're harming yourself. But you've got to take other people's willingness to share into the calculation as well. You set a good example. There may be some people who follow and others who don't. But you never know who's going to follow it unless you set it. This is why generosity always comes first in so many lists of the qualities of the teaching. The realization that if you're going to gain anything good, you have to be willing to give first. It forces you to look at what you've got and see areas where you have more than enough. And it creates a sense of abundance, a sense of wealth. It makes it easier to live in constrained circumstances when you feel that you've got abundance within those circumstances. And with a sense that we're all in this together, it makes it a lot easier to put up with other people's idiosyncrasies, other people's foibles. I noticed that there was a group of monks who went up into northwestern Thailand, lived out in the forest. And at first they were living very meager lives, in the sense that there wasn't much. So they shared quite a lot, and the sense of group loyalty and group identity was very strong. And then they started getting support, and some people started hoarding, and the group basically fell apart.
hoarding comes from a sense of poverty. And even though you may have a lot of things, as long as you think you're poor, things get worse and worse. So the willingness to give creates a sense of wealth, a sense of spaciousness inside, and a sense of spaciousness within the group. That's the first principle. The second principle is kind words. Now, this doesn't mean that you not express criticism, but when you do express criticism, express it in a kind way. Show respect for the other person. The number one thing that destroys a group, that destroys a relationship, is the contempt of one person for another. I know of cases where people complain that the other group, does, the other people in the group, does, doesn't like them. And they're showing contempt for the other people immediately. Well, it's because of the contempt that they don't like this person. So if you have something critical to say, stop and think about what would be the best time, the best place, the best way to phrase it. And don't just blurt things out. It's one of the principles I learned living with John Fuga. How you phrase things makes a huge difference. Sometimes in the evening I would come up to him with a question, and Thai was not my native language. I'd try to put together a question in a way that seemed okay to me, and it struck a nerve in him one way or another, and so the, the question would never get answered until I realized what I had to do with the way I phrased it. So I had to think about how to say something to him how to make a request without making it sound like I'm imposing on him, showing respect. And over time I got better and better at it because I was forced to think. And as a result, I developed a skill that I could use with any senior monk. So always remember that the way you say things, the tone of voice, the words you choose, can reverberate around for a long time in other people's minds. So put thought into your words. When you put thought into your words, other people will be willing to think about them. The third principle is that when you help someone else, you genuinely help them. You don't do things simply to make points that then you will then collect. You actually look into what does this person really need? What can I do to help that person's genuine needs? That kind of help goes to the heart. Again, you put thought into the things you do for other people. So they'll be happy to think about them as well. And then finally, consistency. reading a psychology book one time, and they were saying that if you're consistently helpful to other people, they don't really appreciate it. So if you want their appreciation, be inconsistent. Which is a really selfish way of looking at things. That you're trying to milk a little bit of appreciation out of people because of your help. Consistency is a virtue that you benefit from, because after all, when we meditate, we're trying to make the mind consistent. As John Lee points out, we're taking something that's stressful, the way we breathe, the way we experience the body, and making it easeful. Taking something that's inconstant, the way the mind moves around and learning how to give it some constancy. Something that's not self, try to bring it under our control. And those are all the qualities that we try to develop in our consistency. What we develop through consistency as we live in daily life. Because if you're going to be consistent in your help, you'll help others the way you interact. 
You've got to learn how to talk to yourself in a way that makes you enjoy it, that you take pride in your work, pride in the fact that you're reliable. And this way you create a better environment within your own mind and around you. So these are some of the principles that the Buddha would, Buddha would have us keep in mind. So the group gets along, even in difficult circumstances. So that our enforced time together does not drive us apart, but actually strengthens the group, strengthens our practice. creates a good emotional field around the fact that we're here together practicing the Dharma, something that's really good, a rare opportunity. And the more we appreciate how valuable this opportunity is, the more energy we'll be able to put into trying to maintain it and to do it well. <laughs>